Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Stability. Stability indicates the normalcy. When a country is in a stable condition, the whole region will be in stable condition. The stability, whether it is economic stability, social stability or political stability, any kind of stability is very, very important to maintain the peace and order in any of the countries. If there is a stability, there will be peace and order. If there is a peace and order in the country, there will be peace and order in the whole region. South Asia is known for instability. So there are some of the countries where there are disturbances. There is a threat to the peace. For example, Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, the terror, once upon a time, it was designated as a terror organization, that is Taliban. Taliban is ruling now. Before Taliban, there was anarchy, so lot of chaos. That instable stability in the country resulted into threat to the peace and order to the whole of the uh, world. Okay. In the same way, there is one more country which is facing some of the instable stable conditions in the South Asian region. That country is the Sri Lanka. So you might uh, you might be knowing the various news related to the Sri Lanka. Why the Sri Lanka has reached that point? Why the people are protesting? Why the president and the prime minister they are fleeing from the country? What has led to this situation? Okay, let us understand all those things in this chapter. Okay, that is the Sri Lankan economic crisis. Now, what is the context? The context is that the people of Sri Lanka, they are protesting, they are on the streets, they are demanding the president and the prime minister to resign and to form the new government. Okay, the Sri Lanka is the 22 million Sri Lanka has the 22 million people. Okay, it is now under the grip of severe economic and political turmoil. Okay, that means there is an instability with respect to the politics as well as the economy of the country. This instable condition is very, very worst situation. This condition has been for the it is the first time in its 70 years of journey. The Sri Lanka got the independence from the British in the year 1948. From 1948. The Sri Lanka has not witnessed such a severe condition, but this is for the first time it is witnessing such a economic and political turmoil. Okay, the president and the prime minister they are missing. We don't know where they have gone. Okay, the PM's house has been set on fire. The prime minister's house, which is the private house, it is now being set on fire by the people of the Sri Lanka. Okay, now the anarchy is ruling the roost. That means that nobody is ruling. We don't know who is going to head the government, how, when this government will be formed. So this is the prevailing condition in Sri Lanka right now. So because of this context, the topic has been selected for discussion today. Okay, this is the prime minister's private house, which is being set on fire. And this is the presidential palace or you can say the government or the official residence of the president of Sri Lanka. So in this palace, the people of Sri Lanka have been stormed and now they have occupied the residential place of the Sri Lankan president. Okay. Now what exactly is happening? So according to the United Nations World Food Program, okay, this is the UN body, World Food Program, according to this data, nearly 9 of the 10 families are skipping meals or otherwise they are skimping to stretch out their food that means around 90 percent of the households okay 9 in 10 that means 90 percent of the families they are skipping their meals or they are skimping that means they are extending their food that by eating less amount of food they are extending the food storage in their houses so in this way they are starving or they are saving the food for the future time okay so again the 3 million people according to the world food program data 3 million people are receiving the emergency humanitarian aid that means 30 lakh people in the Sri Lanka they are dependent on the humanitarian aid given by the other countries or any of the other international organizations that means they will feed their stomach only when some other countries give the food so this is the condition which is being uh, you know uh, which is pre prevalent in Sri Lanka right now so this is how the people are you know they're fighting for their food they are you now fighting for occupying the presidential palace this is what is happening in Sri Lanka now 
what are people actually doing yes they are starving they are extending their food by eating less what else they are doing so the doctors they have resorted to social media now they are using the social media to try to get the critical supplies of equipment and the medicine that means the doctors they are they are not able to perform the duties because of the lack of equipments needed for their surgery and other operational procedures there is a growing number of sri lankans which are see who are seeking the passports to go out or to go overseas in search of the work that means because there is no government in sri lanka right now there is an anarchy people are you know afraid whether there is a few better future for them or not in their own country so because of this threat or because of this worry they want to leave their country they want to do job in other countries they want to live a life of peace in another countries so because of this they are seeking the passports to go out of the country now the government workers they have been ordered okay to grow their own food for 3 months they have been given uh, the holidays to allow them to grow the food of their own that means food shortage is there government cannot you know provide the salary to the uh, employees also now the government has asked the employees to go out, go to home and cultivate the crops so that they can feed their stomachs so this is what is happening in sri lanka now before going further into this discussion i want to ask one question because the what in this in this discussion there is a concept called a foreign exchange reserve you have to answer me which country holds the highest foreign exchange reserves in the world okay which country holds the highest foreign exchange reserves in the world okay it is also called as the forex forex reserve or foreign exchange reserve okay let us proceed see what are the reasons that led to the uh, sri lanka's present situation let us analyze the reasons responsible for the economic and political turmoil in the sri lanka the major reason for this crisis is the twin deficit this is very important twin deficit what is a twin deficit it is the deficit or deficiency there are two deficiencies that is twin deficit means two deficits what are those two deficits this is purely economic concept one is fiscal deficit another one is current account deficit it is also called cad okay fiscal deficit and the current account deficit do these two deficits have led to the present situation the corruption and along with this the corruption and years of economic mismanagement yes the political corruption and the mismanagement of the government governance or the economical aspects of the country have led to the creation of the twin deficit that is the fiscal deficit and the current account deficit so according to the asian development bank this twin deficit means a country's national expenditure exceeds its national income that means the country will spend more and more than it earns okay income is less compared to the expenditure that means the country will spend more but it will earn less that means definitely there will be the deficiency then the production of tradable goods and the services is inadequate okay one side the country is expending more another side the tradable goods and services are very less that means the production of goods and the services is very less so if the goods and services production is very less what have to do they have to depend more on other country to import okay so that means the imports will be more when the domestic production of the goods and services is less it will lead to the import of such goods and services from other country so increased import and increased expenditure will lead to the twin deficit that is fiscal deficit and current account deficit so this is the major reason for the present situation in sri lanka then let us analyze one by one the reasons okay the economic growth what is the forecast of economic growth according to the world bank okay so according to the world bank between 2010 and 2016 for 6 years there was an average growth rate of 6.2% in sri lanka okay so far till 2016 it was very good 6.2% of economic growth means it's a good uh, sign then from between 2016 and 19 it came down to 3.1% that means 50% of reduction in the economic growth of the country that means something was going on 
something mismanagement was going on between uh, these two periods okay then in 2021 the economic growth was 3.5 percent that means the economic recovery was there from 2019 to 2021 the production of goods and services was good okay there was a better management of economy because of that there was a 3.5 percent growth rate but this year the world bank says there will be 2.4 percent of the economic growth for 2022 fiscal year or financial year there will be growth rate of 2.4 percent that means from 3.5 percent to 2.4 percent the forecast is low that means the economic growth will be very less in this period okay that is only up to 2.4 percent that to the world bank says this forecast or this outlook is highly uncertain so it has forecasted or it has predicted that there will be 2.4 percent of the growth rate but this is not ensured whether uh, it increases or not but definitely it is uncertain that means it will it may come down from 2.4 percent to it may come down to 1 percent given the present situation in sri lanka okay this is the uncertain uncertainty given by the world bank now this is the graphical representation of the economic you know uh, growth rate of the country so in 2010 so it was more than five percent that, that means 6.2 percent growth rate was there so year after year so it came down and it it has dipped uh, the negative point in some point in the 2020 year it started to recover so so in 2021 there was a 3.5 percent now 2022 we don't know what will happen okay so this is the economic growth rate or the economic journey of the country from 2010 now first major is reason for the crisis is the decreasing foreign exchange reserve okay so sri lanka now imports three billion dollar worth of goods and services than it exports that means the imports are more okay there is a mismatch between import and export okay the import bill is three billion dollar more than the export bill that means the country has to give more and more, more money to buy the goods and services okay so there is a decreasing foreign exchange because of this uh, expenditure on the import the foreign exchange is dwindling or it is being reduced so at the end of 2019 there was the foreign exchange reserve of 7.6 billion dollar that means around 8 billion dollar was there in the hands of the sri lankan government the, in the foreign exchange reserve it was 8 billion but by march within one year or within just three four months it came down to 1.9 billion that means around 2 billion dollars see it's very very less 2 billion dollar means it was not sufficient to import the goods and services which are sufficient for two months okay so now in 2022 the prediction is that or the government right now it has the only 50 million dollar in its hand that means foreign exchange reserves are very very less this amount 50 million dollar is not sufficient to buy the goods and services for the uh, which are needed for the people of the country okay that means it, it this amount shows the country is in the grave threat this this is the threat to the economy so because of this low balance in the hand the sri lankans are not able to buy the goods and services you might have observed in the news that the people are you know standing in the long queues to buy the goods and services now second reason is the first reason was less foreign exchange reserve second was the largest tax cuts in the sri lankan history so the rajapaksha who was the president during the presidential election campaign in 2019 he announced various people friendly initiatives or they can be called as the freebies he gave a lot of freebies to the people he announced the freebies in the form of tax cut deep tax cut that means people were happy they were not uh, see it was not necessary for them to pay the taxes the president has cut the taxes so he came because of this freebies or the offering of such freebies the president came to power and he implemented the promises of the election campaign in 2019 so these tax elections are the they were introduced some some months before the covid 19 pandemic okay so in 2019 march that covid 19 uh, pandemic started but before that the government announced the tax reductions okay so what happened so during this time the sri lanka required a lot of money or revenue to fund the various 
infrastructure projects whether it is a building of the port or airport or laying of the railway lines so for such economical developmental uh, 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 operations or for the infrastructure development the government needed more and more revenue but what the president did he announced the tax reductions that means there is a less revenue to the government so because of this less less revenue the government had to depend on another country to take the loans okay so the result is that the loss of there is a, there was a loss of income to the government to the tune of 1.4 billion for one year so because of the tax reductions the there was a loss of 1.4 billion dollar to the sri lankan government now this affected the government in the form of a fiscal deficit and the revenue deficit okay so when there is a fiscal deficit definitely so the country has to buy the loan from other country okay so because of this also the budget deficits also increased now third reason for this crisis is organic farming the sri lankan government it banned the all the chemical fertilizers which are required for the agricultural operations are to support the nutrient base of the crops so when the economy was not performing well when the country has to depend more and more on the imports it has to find the ways to reduce the imports right so in that regard the government announced that there will be ban on the import of the chemical fertilizers from the other countries and it asked the people of the country to practice the organic farming so this organic farming though it is very good for the economy it is good for the environment also and in the long for sustainable development or organic farming is highly recommended but it should be implemented in the rational way there should be proper preparation behind uh, before implementing such a large scale uh, projects but before uh, uh, proper uh, before the implementation of this project there was no proper thought there was no rational thinking behind uh, just to reduce the import bill the government announced to practice the organic farming to its uh, people and government banned all the import of the chemical fertilizer so this has led to the disaster in the uh, agriculture field of the sri lanka P uh, see the result is that the sri lanka there was a widespread crop failure so immediately the land was not such you know fertile so it land was not able to uh, supply the all the required nutrients for the crops because of that the there was a widespread crop failure it this crop failure has resulted in the in the 20% drop in rice production that means if the country was initially growing the 100 kg of the rice now it has came down to only 80 kg that means 20% gap was created be, uh, because of the Uh, the uh, introduction of the organic farming next the sri lanka had to supplement its uh, food stocks from abroad which made its foreign currency shortage even worse see when there is a shortage of the food production okay the people will suffer from hungry right okay to prevent the hunger deaths to prevent the proper uh, oh, sorry to supply the pro proper food the government again it dependent uh, dependent on other country to import the food grains it started to import the rice i said 20% rice production was impacted to fill this 20% gap the government resorted to imp or borrow the food grain from other country so this borrowing again led to the increased import bill it it what's under the currency shortage okay then imf according to the international monetary fund it not only this organic fertilize uh, farming not only affected the rice production but it also affected the tea and rubber production also <coughs> tea and rubber production came down okay now the situation in the tree, tea industry is that the farmer says that the organic way of farming in the tea a sector is 10 times more costlier than the inorganic way of farming okay so there was a tenfold increase are the yes tenfold increase in the cost of production of the tea but there was a less yield compared to the inorganic way of farming okay so in this way the organic farming experiment affected the tea industry also now fourth reason is the debt diplomacy the china through its uh, central bank that is exim bank of india 
sorry exim bank of china gave the concessional loans to the sri lanka sri lanka it, it the, the china took the advantage of this chinese condition it offered the cheaper loans to the china and it said yes we will give you the concessional loans for the long time okay there is no need to uh, immediately uh, repay the debt you can take the loan and you can repay over the long period of time okay and it said uh, so, uh, so uh, and because of this you know cheaper loans the china offered to build the infrastructure projects at the hambon tota and the mattala rajapaksha international airport at mattala so these through the cheaper loans given by the exim bank of china the sri lanka initiated the projects at the hambon tota and at the mattala these are the ports okay port development started so but it is it is the clear indication that the china is offering the concession concessional loans to make the sri lanka more and more dependent on the china but the then president that is rajapaksha dismissed the view that the sri lanka was forced to enter a 99 year lease with the china because of the failure to pay the project's debts the president he was questioned he, there was a criticism against this signing of the agreement and the rajapaksha or the president of sri lanka said no so we are not entering into into this uh, agreement uh, because of the uh, not uh, because of the inability of the pay the debt okay it he defended his stance and he he dismissed all the criticism against this agreement okay this has led to the uh, debt trap of the country that means country the, it's a trap country was not able to repay the debt and because of this uh, inability of the sri lanka the china started to impose more and more conditions on the sri lanka now this is how the government viewed the hamban tota and mittala rajapaksha port projects okay so there was a clear indication that the economy will sink down because of such initiatives but the president was looking on an other side he was looking the new diamond arriving in the form of the boat but the actual boat was sinking down so this is how the government viewed so this proved to be a disaster for the country again the mounting foreign debt the fifth reason is the mounting foreign debt are increasing the foreign debt so in 2005 there was foreign debt of only 11.5 3 billion dollar but in 2020 it increased to 56 billion dollar within 5 year there was a increase of 45 billion dollar loan or it can it, you can say it as the debt okay the debt was increasing within this 15 years there was a increase of 45 billion dollar debt so in in terms of percentage in 2019 the debt was 42% of the gdp okay around half of the gdp was coming in the form of the debt but in 2021 just one year back the debt was 119% of the gdp that means around 120% of the gdp was in the form of loan so huge dependence on the uh, other countries to run the economy of the native country so so because of this mounting debt it led to the crisis okay so out of this 60 you can say around 60 billion debt 6.5 billion of the debt is owed to china that means china is giving 10% of the total debt of uh, debt of the sri lanka that means the china is the major player in provision of the debts or the loans to the sri lankan government okay so because of the increased debt the government of sri lanka is not able to repay the loans the let alone the interest rate it is not you know paying the interest but it is not able to uh, sorry it, let alone the the principal amount the sri lanka is not in a position to give the interest on the loan itself okay so look into this point the sri lanka announced in april this year that in 2022 in the april it said the government is suspending nearly 7 billion dollar foreign debt repayment due to for this year that means in this year by july the sri lankan government had to repay the 7 billion dollar debt to the other country but the country announced the sri lankan government announced that it is not going to pay the debt it it has suspended the payment of the or the repayment of the debt see uh, by 2026 within next 4 years the sri lanka as a whole it has to repay the 25 billion dollar loans to other countries okay it is not in a position to repay this loan okay that means it has now it has entered into the debt trap now the country is struggling to overcome there is no production 
there is no proper services there was no in increased exports more import m uh, st stopped economic activities more and more inflation the country is totally failed to generate any kind of employment so because of this the debt is increasing okay there is the sri lanka is literally struggling to find the way to overcome this trap now see this is the graphical representation of the debt of the sri lanka so in 2021 so 56.3 billion dollar uh, us dollar this is the total debt amount of the sri lanka okay so this is the graph representing the the countries to which the sri lanka owes the loans okay india it has given 2% of the loan the china has given 10% of the loan the other uh, financial agencies like the Fina asian development bank it has given 13% of the loan okay so the sri lanka has borrowed around 47% of the loans through the markets okay so this is the relative position of the different countries with respect to the debt of the china now next reason that led to the crisis is the fall of foreign remittances foreign remittance means whatever the the money deposited by the citizens which are who are residing in other countries for example the sri lanka for example sri lankan citizen is staying in america usa who oh, this sri lankan citizen will work in the united states of america he will earn some income in the usa okay this earned income will be sent back to the sri lanka okay whatever the sri lankan citizen earns in the united states okay he will send that income to the country that income which is sent by the citizen of the country is called as the remittance okay but this remittances were falling down because the government of sri lanka again attempted one step that is it attempted to keep the currency pegged at 200 lankan rupees sri lankan rupees okay that means it fixed 1 dollar is equal to 200 lankan rupees okay it is written as lankan rupees lkr that is sri lankan rupee 1 dollar means 200 lanka rupee this is pegged that means it was fixed irrespective of the market situation irrespective of the export and import the government of sri lanka fixed the rupee sri lankan rupee with respect to the dollar so what happens if the free market is there there should be free floating currency that means the currency value should fluctuate with respect to the economic situation if the exports are increased the rupee will become stronger if the imports are increased the rupee will become weaker okay so based on the export and import and based on the economic performance of the country the rupee value must be fixed that is called as the floating currency so instead of floating maintaining the floating currency this the sri lankan government pegged the currency okay that means it fixed the value of the currency this led to the reduction in the remittances okay the, the people who are residing other country they will send the remittance when there is a weak uh, native currency if the native currency become weaker that means 1 dollar equal to, see weaker means one now it is 1 dollar equal to 200 rupees if the 1 dollar equal to 250 becomes it is called as the weaker currency that means currency depreciation will take place with respect to the dollar when the native currency becomes weaker the remittances will be more that means if they send 1 dollar they now they will earn 250 rupees initially when they in, in this situation if the currency is fixed 1 dollar is equal to 200 but here if it is floating currency 1 dollar equal to 250 so because of this pegging of the currency the remittances were came down so what is the reduction there was a reduction of 61% of the remittances that means huge reduction in the remittance the sri lankan government had to face the losses with respect to the remittances sent by the sri lankan citizens from other countries okay this is the fluctuation in the remittances okay it this graph shows the remittances with respect to 2020 and 2021 this is 2020 this is 2 2021 last year the remittances came down from 700 million dollar to now it has reached only around 300 million dollar 60% reduction in the remittances sent by the sri lankan citizens from abroad okay now tourism sector the tourism sector also failed the sri lanka as you know this is the island country known for its natural beauty or the scenic beauty and some of the islands surrounding the sri lankan mainland okay so because of this the sri lanka attracts more and more tourists from the abroad the two events led to the reduction in the 
footfalls of the tourists. One was the Easter bombing. There was a deadly attack on the Sri Lankan citizens in 2019 in the form of Easter bombings and the 2019 COVID pandemic. These two events led to the reduction in the footfall of the tourists. That means the tourists stopped visiting the Sri Lankan country. So this, this reduction in the tourism led to the reduction in the revenue of the government. Okay, Again, this led to the economic crisis. So if you look into this data, in 2020, 18, the Sri Lanka was earning 5.6% of GDP from the tourism sector. Okay, around 6% of the GDP was coming from the tourism sector alone. But now in 2020, it came down to only 0.8%. That means less than 1% of the GDP. Huge difference, 5% loss to the GDP. Okay, because of reduced tourist activities. Now, one major factor is the ratio Ukrainian war. Now, as you know very well that the Russia and the Ukraine, they are involved in the conflict. This conflict has affected the Sri Lankan economy also. In what form? Russia is the second biggest market to the Sri Lanka in tea exports. That means the Sri Lanka sends or the exports tea in highest quantity to the Russia. That means Russia is the highest buyer of the Ch Sri Lankan tea. Now, sorry, this is the second biggest buyer of the Sri Lankan tea. Now it is in the war, thus Russia has to maintain its economy also. Now it has stopped some of the wasteful expenditure. Okay, it has stopped, the Russia has stopped some of the ex imports. Okay, one of such good is the tea from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan tea has now been, you know, in less demand in the Russian market. Second reason uh, in the Russia-Ukraine war is that the Sri Lanka's tourism sector is heavily reliant upon these two countries, that is the Ukraine and Russia, as most of the tourist arrivals are from Russia and Ukraine. That means out of uh, 100, for, uh, okay, whatever the tourists visit the Sri Lanka, maximum number of tourists will be from Russia and Ukraine. These two countries send more and more tourists to the Sri Lanka. So because of this war, the Sri Lanka, sorry, Russian and the Ukrainian citizens are not visiting the Sri Lanka, okay, these countries are, they are not importing the tea from Sri Lanka. So this has led to the economic crisis or it has affected the economy of the Sri Lanka, okay. The result is that it has put a halt to the path of economic recovery of Sri Lanka with both tea and tourism sector have been hit hard, tea and tourism sector, okay. So this is the impact of Russia. Ukrainian war on Sri Lankan economy. What is the overall impact? In what way the Sri Lanka is suffering? I just said that the people are suffering from the hunger. They are on the streets. Now the presidential palace has been occupied by the people. But what are the, the other impacts? Let us look into the other impacts also. One is political impact. Yes, there is a fall down of the government. The prime minister and the president, they have been fled from their offices. We don't know where where with all about the president and the prime minister they have fled now there are talks about the forming new government now there is an anarchy that means no one is ruling there is a complete a confusion in the country so the government officially in 2021 the result is that the government officially declared the food emergency that means it said there is a severe shortage of the food the people are suffering from the uh, hungerness the people have to save the food or they have to eat very less and less this is the food emergency declared in 2021 okay again in the this year in 2022 april the 41 members of the parliament they left the ruling coalition that means they reduced the majority of the government in the parliament now the president and the prime minister they are absconding so this is the political impact of this uh, crisis on sri lankan economy next electricity and the fuel shortage there is a severe shortage of electricity and the fuel See, what is the impact? The government asked to switch off the street lights. Okay, now the government is, you know, switching off the street lights. There is a darkness on the streets now. Thousands of bakeries have been shut as a response to the shortage of cooking gas. So, to prevent the import of the cooking gas, the bakeries have been shut. There is a daily power cut around 15 to 20 hours power cut is there. Now, military has been deployed in various gas and fuel uh, filling stations okay so these situations you know they tell the grim situation or the very uh, grave uh, scenario in the sri lankan economic economy today so this is how the people are standing in the queues to get the fuel and the gas and required other energy inputs for their families now 
headline inflation the inflation has been increased because of this crisis the impact is that increased inflation so in 2021 july the inflation was around 5% okay For within one year in now in may it reached 20 sorry 39% Okay, this is the headline inflation. It includes both food, fuel and other uh, materials also. So this increased inflation, that means 39% in inflation, that means it's a very huge people's uh, money in the hand. It, it has lost its, its value. The people have to spend more and more money to buy the goods, okay, essential goods. 39% inflation, okay. Next, education. In the education sector, the educational institutions had to ban the examinations or the institutions had to postpone the examination because of the lack of papers okay why there was a lack of paper because there was a reduced import why there was reduced import because the foreign exchange reserves were very less okay that means the the money in the government's hand was very less to buy the goods from other countries okay so because of this the education of the students was impacted now with respect to the health, in the health sector also, various government hospitals have been, uh, now they have suspended their operations, okay? They have suspended, various surgeries have been suspended by the doctors because of the shortage of the medicines. When various other hospitals have reduced the large number of laboratory tests, okay, like urine tests or the blood tests, such tests have been uh, banned or the reduced hospitals are running out of the life-saving medicines. So this is the impact of this economic crisis on the health sector. Now, impact on exports. Okay, the leading textile brands like the Zara, these are the international brands, okay. This Zara or Mango, H&M, these are the leading international brand, uh, textile brands, okay. Now they were getting more and more textile or the raw material from the Sri Lanka. Now because of this crisis, because of the reduced ag agricultural activity, there is no supply of such textile for the these countries. Now sorry, these companies. Now such companies are looking into the India. Now India has become their uh, spot to get the required material for their textile industry. Okay, in this way, the exports are affected uh, in the Sri Lankan country. Now, wh what is the impact of this crisis on the diplomatic relations that means international relations now the sri lanka has set some of the set down some of the uh, c high commissioners it has you know uh, called back its ambassadors okay various these uh, c high commissions consulates or embassies they have been temporarily closed down okay due to lack of uh, foreign reserves okay these offices in foreign countries have to be maintained so they require a lot of money to run the offices okay to save the money the government now it has closed down all such embassies commissions and uh, the consulates in nigeria germany norway cyprus in iraq okay so this is the impact on the international relations or the diplomatic relations now this is all about the Sri Lankan crisis and the impact of this economic crisis on the uh, various sectors of the Sri Lankan government. Now again, there is a one curious case related to the Pakistan. The Pakistan is also experiencing the same thing. Whatever the Sri Lanka was in the place, for example, when the Sri Lanka was between 2015 to 2019 whatever the Sri Lanka experience the same thing has been or the same situation is being faced by the Pakistan also now on the western border that is India's western border Pakistan is facing the political upheaval see recently there was a change of the prime ministership okay well the economic scenario is also worsening so this is uh, with respect to the politics there is a upheaval that means there is a lot of disturbance in the economic scenario also the high, there is a high inflation there is a currency devaluation and there is a high external debt so you might have read in the newspaper that the prime minister asked the citizens not to drink the tea itself it's a very very basic you know ingredient in everyone's diet but the prime minister is asking not to drink such a small quantity of the tea that means you can imagine how the uh, economic grim or the economic situation is there in the pakistan this is a very curious case of pakistan let us wait and watch what will happen in the Pakistan also, whether the, it will become second Sri Lanka or not. So this is very curious case. Okay, I asked you one question. So there is the answer I, I asked, which is the, 
which country holds the highest foreign exchange reserves in the world okay that is sri lanka sorry china china has the 3480 billion us dollar reserve that means it is the richest country with respect to the imp importing the goods and services from other countries okay so these are the top five countries which hold the highest foreign exchange reserves in the world okay thank you very much for watching this video let's meet in the next video for next discussion